Yo, what's up? I am. Yeah, it's early. Okay. It's 11.25 right now. Uh, July 5th, 2020. So we're almost half done with 2020. And uh, things are going pretty smoothly, obviously, right? So I got the news up here. So I'm going to start, I'm going to take a little bit, you know, I'm going to try to pick up where I left off yesterday. Okay. You see, you see, I still got my screen here, right? Um, and uh, I, I have news up and I'm just going to start first. Let's, let's start looking at this is I should I'm going to I told you yesterday I'm going to name this segment a little something a little different. And again, search for eternal life, by the way, has not stopped. OK, that's going to continue. I just need to get my bearings there. OK, but for now, I'm just going to talk about um, what I'm going to do in this segment called fallacious. Right. I'm just going to go through a whole bunch of different fallacies. Um, and we're going to apply those fallacies to the news. Okay, this, this, this sounds like it could be interesting, and I could be opening myself up to a ton of potential. Um, uh, pew, pew, you know, but I don't want to, you know, make this political. Actually, I think people, maybe there should be like a procedure where if you see a, some news, you immediately, it'll bring up this list of fallacies so you can look at this fallacy and you can debate uh, the existence of these fallacies in those news statements. You know, I, I don't know if it's going to work. It's something I'm just thinking about. But I mean, you know, something to combat the fake news. By the way, uh, just a little bit about, um, you know, my personal existence yesterday. You know, I'm going all into different things. Um, yesterday, I went to Home Depot for the first time in a long time. Uh, I've been used to going to Lowe's, okay? Like, uh, and both, by the way, everyone has to be um, masked and everyone, I'll just saw mask man fallacy. Everyone has to be masked. Everybody has to do the social distancing and all that. But I realized something important um, for those people who are gardening, uh, like gardening, um, seeds aren't out all year, right? Seeds get taken up. Uh, I never really paid too much attention to when um, seeds are available, like f seeds to plant for flowering, not bird seed, which actually I was corrected to in asking a question yesterday about where are the seeds in a stop and shop I went to to look for seed packages and somebody wasn't sure whether well, I meant bird seeds or actual uh, flowery seeds. Well, anyway, in Home Depot, there's tons of, um, like in, in Lowe's Home Depot, a lot of the hardware stores with a garden center, right, they have tons of seeds available throughout the year, throughout certain parts of the year. But I mean, and I remember as of last week seeing shelves full of seeds. Okay, so, and throughout spring, obviously you see shelves full of seeds. But, you know, um, it's just recent where I was just helping a family member with uh, their gardening needs. And I had to go to the store to pick up some gardening supplies like shears, seeds, um, uh, a few other utensils, pots. Okay, and pots and lows, the lows that I frequent, the pots were like completely gone. Okay, the seeds were like complete, were not even available on display anymore. There may have been some in the back, whatever, but they didn't obviously want to bring them out. I had to go, I went to Stop and Shop, then I finally went to Home Depot and I found the seeds, but they had, the seeds had essentially been ransacked. There was like maybe one sixth of the uh, total supply, and I bet that's going to go down. And I guess that makes sense because it's past planting season, so maybe seeds aren't selling as much anymore seeds and pods and spores, etc. They're not selling as much. Anyway, it's something to note for the future if I'm ever um, buying something. Uh, and, and I want to get gardening supplies and make my own garden, per se. Anyway, um, yeah, but uh, yesterday um, did not go to the beach like most people did. Um, like, it's probably a bad, would have been a bad idea to do that. Um, and uh, so we en ended up going to Boonton in New Jersey. Uh, Boonton is an interesting place. Um, it's a very old-timey-like town. I think I've been in the last few weeks in the habit of going to old-timey-like towns in New Jersey. Uh, like one of the Stanhope had uh, Wild West City uh, there, which I didn't actually go to, but I did a video with that talked about that. Uh, Boonton was a town founded in 1866, so literally like one year after the Emancipation Proclamation was put into effect. So the town has been around for a long time. Uh, looks like it's been around for a long time. City structure looks like it hasn't evolved significantly. Um, and it makes me wonder when I go to these small towns and walk around, like the mysteries that are there that have been there for uh, time immemorial. I mean, Stanhope was there since like 1905 or something. Boonton's even longer. I might try to 
now that I'm thinking about it, go to even older uh, Jersey towns and kind of like look at the area, try to take some more eff better effective pictures and things like that, etc. So anyway, um, and that was a little bit about my day yesterday, uh, and I'm gonna just keep mentioning that in the beginning of every video because you know that's part of your part of the search for eternal life is remain remembering your existence day to day and putting it down on paper somewhere. Okay, a um, bunch of other stuff happened yesterday that was a relatively little significance. I mean, I heard fireworks like you know throughout the night. Um, I don't think they were the Macy's sanctioned fireworks. Uh, I, I wonder what happened with the fireworks yesterday. Let me just take a look because I know Macy's, they said they were holding, I got confused. Like I wasn't sure what they were doing because they said they were gonna have like little random shows throughout the day to indicate um, uh, uh, fireworks news. Like maybe we can learn about fireworks today. Oh, that's that's a way to go off a tiny malfunction during Plano fireworks displays, sparks grass fire, wow. Okay, well, fourth, the way to celebrate 4th of July than an uncontrolled gas, grass fire. Um, I bet it was put down. It wasn't like the California wildfires of earlier this year. Everyone remember, anyone remember those, right? Those are kind of crazy. Um, nope, everybody forgot about that, right? Where millions of koalas died in Australia. Uh, well, you know, ugh, no script warning. Um, block this request. I want to block this request. Uh, That's why I'm on tour right now. I'm not trying to get any... Uh, fucking you know tracking our viruses or anything like that um signs of normal nyc f july 4th fr franks fireworks and flyover oh yes and then there was this hot dog eating contest today why was i allowed to look at the news if i'm you know this is this is um some sort of discrimination i'm gonna say um anyway there was a hot dog eating contest yesterday let's talk about that because i spent a little time re researching that uh, the Nathan's Hot Dog Eating Contest. And for those who are old enough, you remember in 2001, I think uh, Kobayashi, right? Uh, he was the first phenom who had uh, doubled the hot dog eating record. He'd like literally been the guy who broke the four minute mile, right? No one said it could be done. He was the Roger Bannister of competitive eating, right? Which I just was kind of looking into yesterday and it's just a fascinating uh, sport right it's fascinating but it's really bad for you i mean you could get all sorts of things like stomach distension people have died competitive eating which is not surprised i think i remember a few years ago some girl died eating twinkies someone even died this year I, it's kind of crazy um but yeah i think the nathan's hot dog eating contest been, has been hosted in by the same guy who has like gray hair now i think it's been 20 years since i saw him in eating oh kobayashi uh uh crushing the previous record of half of, of 50 hot dogs he originally had someone had 25 underneath him but then kobayashi got arrested and then there was what turned what eventually uh happened was this year i mean there's been a, a persistent eating championship uh being won by this guy named joey chestnut that's uh, a very long islandish coney name right Oh, these guys were eating hot dogs, uh, and this is some Mickey Sudo. Okay, so she sounds like a wrestler's name, doesn't it? But it's actually a person who eats uh, competi hot dogs competitively and other foods. And then these people have ridiculous appetites. Like uh, Mickey Sudo um, is able to eat, uh, I don't know, eight pounds of kimchi in a single eating. She also has a really strange way of eating where she cleans her mouth constantly on her shirt as she's eating. Um, and uh, and she look at her she's super skinny she's half japanese kobayashi was japanese um and i think the next person next to her didn't even he eat quote close to the number of hot dogs that she ate she's also 35 so she's at a good age where i think the i don't know the food isn't really killing her you know but uh, chestnut joey chestnut's 36 this guy is a super big guy and all these guys next to him are really big but this guy ate 75 hot dogs in um uh a single uh sitting right it's insane i mean i don't even know if his stomach was distended afterwards like i i looked at her her stomach wasn't distended they're holding up these massive championships i you know these guys i wonder what uh, motivates them to do what they do uh this is all in our man's competition begins see like the judge it's they're very careful about preventing covid wow this guy like if you take a look, the, um, these contestants, uh, some of them, you know, are surprised. Like one guy is kind of like diesel looking, so he's obviously scarfing things down. The he's probably just happy to go against Joey Chestnut. This guy to the right is humongous, and oh my god, 
Matt Stoney. Oh, this is like a young, really young guy who, uh, again, is a mid, early mid twenties who um, beat a Joey Chestnut in 2015. Um, but that's kind of crazy. He's also he's also this, like emo looking kid of some kind. Um, anyway, uh, so basically, you know, I mean, you can make a sport out of anything, right? And I guess people actually pay. I don't know if like how much how well off these people are, but probably there's all sorts of things as in the form of endorsements. You know, this is a serious sport. You know, but I remember I think people were complaining about um. Uh, let's see if there's a GIF of hot dog eating. I don't want to put on a whole video, right? Uh, hot dog eating contest GIF. It's going to be gross. So, you know, there's going to be like, let's see what this guy's doing. Okay, see, that's a good one, right? Like, I, I you know, I could keep that going. I want to see what uh, Joey, Ch Joey Chestnut, uh, he's like, these, oh my God, that's uh, terrible. And there's more GIFs of him just, uh, you know, scarfing down these people like chomping away their lives. I wonder how many years they take off their life for each contest that they participate in. By the way, Joey Chestnut again, he has tons of records and other things. He ate like six pounds of asparagus as his first competing. Oh my God. That's a watermelon he's eating, I think. Okay. Anyway, so let's just get back to the fallacies. Okay. Maybe I can start like lighthearted and look at the list of fallacies in an article about competitive hot dog eating. A formal fallacy is an error in logic in BRVN's form. So let's look at the formal fallacies. Remember, there's formal fallacies and uh, there's a bunch of other uh, in, there's f informal fallacies that are talking about the content, okay? Because formal fallacies are uh, fallacies are about the structure of the sentence. So appeal to, like, let's look, look, let's look for a conjunction fall. Well, mass man fallacy, that's appropriate for COVID. The substitution of identical designators in a true statement can lead to a false one. Um, I want to know what this is about more so, the masked man fallacy. In philosophical logic, masked man fallacy, also known as intentional fallacy and epistemic fallacy, is committed when one mat makes an illicit use of Leibniz's laws and argument. Leibniz's law states that if A and B are the same object and A and B are indiscernible, have all the same properties. By modus tollens, this means that if one object has a certain property, while another object does not have the same property, two objects cannot be identical. The fallacy is epistemic because it posts an immediate identity between a subject's knowledge of an object with the object itself, failing to recognize that Leibniz's law is not capable of accounting for intentional context. That's a mouthful. So let's look at the example. Maybe it makes sense. The example of the fallacy comes from an example. I know Bob. I know who Bob is. I don't know who the masked man is. Therefore, the masked man is not. Therefore, Bob is not the masked man. That's an interesting. I know who Bob is. I do not know who the masked man is. Therefore, Bob is not the masked man. I, how can one? How could one like? I guess that's where the fallacy is, but it's hard to like put into words. Like you know intuitively this is a fallacy. The premise may be true, and the conclusion is false. If Bob is the masked man, the speaker does not know that. Thus, the argument is a fallacious one. I know who Bob is. I, you're applying something that shouldn't be applied, right? Your knowledge of Bob does not apply, does not allow you to form a conclusion about if Bob is the masked man or not, right? Like, even, it's, even if you don't, it based on whether you know who the masked man is. Say you're trying to unmask a man, you know who Bob is. So it's basically saying something like, I know, I know who John is. John isn't, I, I don't know who the murderer is, but I know, since I know John, I know John is not the murderer. Oh, that's a common one, right? Because people say that all the time to get somebody off of, uh, or, or, or to create reasonable doubt, or they attempt to create, quote, reasonable, unquote, doubt about somebody, just because you know somebody, right? Um, and, and you don't know anything about a negative ident uh, identity, of somebody else doesn't mean you can say that person is not equivalent to that someone else, right? You can't say like the property is masked because you know something about the unmasked comparator. You can't compare the masked and the unmasked comparator. I get in terms of, you know, their equivalence. I, I think I get it. Um, intention, the coordination between referees in contrast with things to which it applies. So now once you look at a Wikipedia article, you always got to like, you know, um, uh, you, you gotta always like look at some follow-up because Wikipedia is not the best at making the uh, let's see what this um, effectivology site says because I think I get it 
The mass man fallacy, twisting arguments through invalid substitutions. Okay, mass man fallacy is a logical fallacy is committed when someone assumes that if two or more names or descriptions refer to the same thing, they can be freely substituted or, with one or another. Um, in a situation that's not, for example, the mass man fallacy could occur. Someone claimed that given that Peter Parker is Spider Man and given that the citizens of New York know Spider Man saved their city, the citizens of New York know that Peter Parker saved their city. They obviously don't know that they know one thing, they don't know the other thing, even though the other thing is true. So they can't say that something happened because they can't connect the two things together because they don't have that knowledge. This is because even though Peter Parker and Spider Man are both the same person, what people know about Peter Parker is different from what people know about Spider-Man. So it's wrong to say that just because the citizens in New York know something about Spider-Man, they necessarily know the same thing about Peter Parker. Um, so if somebody is the killer, and uh, let's try another one. If somebody is the killer, um, debates on various topics, it's important to understand this. Such In the following order, you'll learn more about this fallacy. Um, understand the mass man fallacy. To understand the mass man fallacy, it's useful for a simplified explanation of the difference between intentionality and extensionality. Okay, that probably makes sense. Intention can be thought as a term that's used to refer to a certain thing or a group of things. For example, the red plan is intention that is used to refer to Mars. So basically, you're putting it's a mask for Mars, right? It's an alias for Mars, the red planet, okay? An intention is essentially an alias. An extension can be thought of as the underlying thing or group of things that a certain term refers to. For example, Mars is the extension that term the red planet also refers to so that the thing the alias refers to is the extension right so um red planet is the intention or the alias uh mars is the object of the or object of the alias or the extension according to any given thing extension can potentially be referred to multiple different uh terms intentions for example the venus can be referred to as using the name Venus, the morning star, the evening star. Those are the, all different aliases or intentions for Venus. An extensional context where only the only thing that matters is the extension. It's possible to freely substitute the different terms, intentions that are used to describe it. For example, considering the following, Bruce Wayne said Batman, Batman said Gotham, Bruce Wayne said Gotham. So you can substitute in statements the intentions and the extensions. But this sounds like an intentional or extensional fallacy where um, in this example, if you can't connect the intention to the extension, even though if they are connected, then you can't assume any properties about the intention as it relates to the extension, even though it may be actually related. In this example, we're discussing the underlying entity is responsible for the action in question. As such, since Bruce Wayne is in fact Batman, it is true that if Batman saved Gotham, then we can say that Bruce Wayne saved Gotham. Conversely, the intentional context and intentions, which are also matter, it's also not possible to freely substitute different terms and intentions are used to describe a certain object extension. For instance, consider the following example. The citizens of Gotham know that Batman saved their city. Bruce Wayne is Batman. The citizens of Gotham know the citizens don't know that Bruce Wayne saved their city. We are discussing what the citizens of Gotham know about the entity that saved their city. As such, since the citizens of Gotham don't necessarily know that Bruce Wayne is Batman, it's fallacious to say that just because they know that Batman saved their city, then they know that Bruce Wayne saved their city. Right? Could I apply this to my life? Just because they know that a, 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 an engineering team... Oh, yeah, I guess they could. Just because they know an engineering team uh, solved a specific problem. They don't know that a specific member of that engineering team solved that specific problem. So it feels that is the that is the application today that I found to the mass man fallacy to my life as it applies. I can explain that later. Anyway, this is an interesting fallacy. We'll have to dissect a little more, but yeah. Um, okay, uh, like, subscribe, comment if you uh, are interested. You know, let's talk more about fallacies and life and all that stuff. See you later.